Hi everyone, this is Brendan Murphy and this is my presentation on using a connectivist professional development using a CMOOC, basically a CMOOC model for professional development. And I guess the first question most people will be asking is what is a CMOOC? And so we'll go to the source right here for what is a CMOOC and that is uh, David Cormier who um, who coined the word in I think it was 2005 and basically at its heart a connectivist MOOC is the thesis that knowledge is distributed across a network um, yada 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 you can, in our hyper-connected hyper world of this 21st century where social media is in our pocket all the time and, and everything can we can communicate with almost anyone at almost any time if I want to know something or I want some help with something, I broadcast that question out to my network and they respond with an answer, usually pretty quickly. Uh, and the stronger my network, the more active my network, the faster they respond and the better the responses. So I may know a lot, but if I have a strong, vibrant personal learning network, then I become that much better. So this connectivist theory, the idea that the connections we have make us um, enhance our knowledge or, or who we are, um, has led to were, led to the creation, led directly to the creation of the first MOOC. And it was the study of the connectivist theory that was the world's first MOOC and, and where the word MOOC was coined the massive open online course because it was a a course uh, by Dave Cormier and George Siemens and I believe Stephen Downs um, who about connectivism and and they opened it up for anybody who wanted to whether they were a credit taking student or not and they ended up having 2,000 people join it and uh, those 2,000 people in they realized that this massive part was really uh, became an important role in the course because when you have so many people and there's no content but rather the participants are creating the content as they go no single person uh, can learn everything that's going on no single person can follow everything that's going on so it becomes important for the uh, participants and, and even the facilitators to uh, choose what part of the course they're really going to follow and participate in. And, and so for each person that will be a little bit different. You and I may have similar interests and we may follow or communicate or connect with a lot of the same people but it will not be the exact same people uh, and, and so what you learn from the course and what I learned from the course will be completely different and so I've taken this connectivist model and developed the open online experience and it's not completely original I really borrowed a lot from a connectivist course in 2000 in 12, or early 2012, late 2012, I borrowed a lot from the ETMU group and um, the idea that there's a weak center. This, this, um, this website here is kind of the center, the hub. Almost everything will, will somehow or another funnel through this website here. Um, and you can see it on the About Us, I, I really talk a lot about the, the philosophy and, and the structure of the course. Um, and uh, the main thing about this course is uh, I work at uh, a high school and the teachers are the students all the new freshmen are getting Chromebooks and the teachers um, obviously have never taught a one-to-one -one environment so they needed some help and support and, and it was part of my job to, to build professional development as support for them so I developed this framework and I said uh, I, I can't teach them a course um, what I need to do is support them through the entire school year so I'll start uh, when the school year starts and I'll go all the way until the end and um, 
these are working professionals, so obviously I can't have too much thrown at them on a regular basis because they, they just don't have time. This hopefully would uh, bring uh, continuing conversations about education and technology in the classroom for the teachers on a regular basis, uh, but not so much at one time that it would be overwhelming for the teachers. And um, because I only have 50 teachers at my school, uh, that's not enough to be massive in its own. So I brought in, uh, in invited teachers from all over the world to come, and, and from at MOOC and from uh, designing new learning environments. A MOOC I took uh, out of Stanford uh, last year. Um, I, I have a lot of people who have joined in. Uh, literally, we have almost 200 people from, uh, you know, a couple of dozen countries around the world. And um, all of these people are sharing their experiences. And, and not all of them are high school teachers because it's important to have uh, a diverse background. So, you know, some of them are high school teachers and some of them are elementary teachers and some are college professors and, and, and whatnot. But they're around the world and they're all working together for the goal of uh, better integration of technology in the classroom. Um, so, uh, you know, that's basically the course. I mean, uh, a week center of teachers coming together on, on a regular basis to talk about specific topics in education. And uh, all the other stuff is, is really the nuts and bolts of how those conversations work. You know, um, blogs are obviously very important because that's where people reflect and share their learning. So if you're writing your own blog, you're, you're teaching us what you've learned. You're reflecting on your own learning. And if you're reading blogs, you're, you're learning from someone else. Uh, the Twitter feed is really uh, starting those conversations or continuing those conversations, uh, quick ways of sharing resources. Uh, we try and have a Twitter chat every other week and, and just have a topic going on, you know, this month is Connected Educator. So how is connectivism and how is being connected, how does that change your, your classroom? Uh, we have groups and I think groups are extremely important. Uh, uh, being a member of a group gives you a, uh, not only a, a built-in support structure, but it also gives you a responsibility. Um, you cannot just be a leech in a group. You have to be a, a, a participating member of that group uh, to be a member. And <clears throat> so it keeps you coming back for more. And, and yes, the open online experience is designed so that people can uh, are not overwhelmed by the work. And, and we even encourage people to drop out. If, if the work is too much right now, drop out for a little while and come back when, when you have more time and, and more energy. Uh, and being a part of a group helps in that because your group will stay in contact with you. And, and uh, when you've been away for a couple weeks, you may get an email from somebody saying, hey, look at this blog post, or I know you'd be interested in this, and it pulls you back in. And you'll do the same for other people. And the, the learning continues that way. Um, but going back to our connectivist professional development, and um, if you could change something about education, what would you change? And, and for me, it would be everything. Um, and that isn't to say that as a teacher and some of these school improvement days or, or, or institute days, uh, there have not there have been some awesome speakers and and I've learned some stuff but um, and maybe I've learned stuff that I would not have chosen to learn uh, so that's uh, I'm not saying to dump all of that but uh, you know the idea that professional development should always be uh, created and delivered to us I think is, is just wrong I think professional development, should be more decentralized, that, uh, you know, we should be able to choose what it is that we want to learn because we know what is important to us. And, and as a middle school teacher or an elementary school teacher or a high school teacher, your needs are different. And, um, you know, how can you say, uh, 
you know, if you're a K through five building, you can bring in one speaker who meets the needs of all of those people. Or if you're a, a high school building, uh, <clears throat> even if you split up into departments, you know, how can you say that one speaker brings to everybody in that department what they need at that time? Uh, you know, we as the participants in the in the professional development need to determine what the focus is for us. And that's what a connectivist MOOC does. It allows you to choose the focus because you're creating the content. The content of what you learn is uh, the research papers that you decided to read or the blog posts that you read or wrote or uh, the Twitter conversation that went on. If you've ever been in a Twitter chat, um, I, I've been discussing this with a, a person who's a newbie to Twitter, and she's like, how do you do this? I thought I was a good multitasker, and you're like got 12 conversations going on at once, and, and you're following them all, and, and you know, <clears throat> that's the way these Twitter chats work, and, and I'm not focusing on everything that goes through in a conversation, but only the parts that really make sense or, or have meaning to me and and that's you know differentiation at its finest so um, the content is created by the participants and, and those of us who are facilitators we're not here bringing you content because the content is cheap instead uh, we're just helping push it along where it needs to be keeping people from getting too emotional if that happens encouraging people to share uh, the occasional bit of technical help but uh, most of all uh, I can say with confidence that every single person who is a facilitator in the open online experience is there first to learn uh, they're not there to teach they're there to, to learn because they know that as a facilitator they'll be learning as much or more than anybody who participates in it um, but uh, this whole online open online experience and I'm trying to take it one step farther than just a constructivist move um, as I've said from the beginning this program was developed um, for my high school teachers for my teachers who have to deal with uh, going transitioning to a one-to-one -one environment um, and they not only do they need support from me and from the teachers but uh, you know they're learning a whole lot of stuff on a regular basis and um, <clears throat> they need the, the, the to they need the school district to understand that uh, what they're learning is directly applicable to their classroom and is changing the classroom and, and uh, that needs to be recognized and supported and uh, <clears throat> they need to participate not only am my teachers participating but I, I'm also pushing hard for my administration to to uh, participate and uh, that's almost as tough as getting teachers to participate in this uh, but you know if the teachers are learning something completely new and and integrating it into their classroom what happens when they get evaluated by a professor by a principal who, who wasn't a part of that learning and doesn't recognize it as a new innovative way of teaching but thinks it's just playing around uh, so the, the administration needs to be a part of the learning going on too <clears throat> education in, in this century is being disrupted education is being disrupted more than at any other time in the history of the world and um, it's changing so fast it it really becomes impossible for one individual to stay on top of all the changes in education but we need to try and the way that I think the best way to do that is through a connectivist environment uh, if you have a strong vibrant network then you don't have to stay on top of everything you just have to stay on top of what you're really passionate about and when your network asks you for more information on that, then it's your responsibility, your obligation to teach them. And then on the flip side, uh, you need to ask and your network needs to teach you 
about stuff that you're interested in, but not necessarily um, super passionate about, not necessarily keeping up on 100%. And we do do that. Uh, this open online experience is one way of, of doing that, but uh, there's other um, there's other alternative professional developments. You know, EdCamp is an awesome grassroots unconference where where teachers get together on a Saturday and they have a, a day plan. They don't have anything planned, but they have a day blocked out, a day of learning, and when they get there. They plan it, and teachers are like, I know about this, I can teach this. I want to learn about that. Who's teaching it? And and we go from 200 educators in a room to 20 rooms with 10 educators each, and they're talking about completely different topics, and everybody in that room is interested in that topic. And if the topic isn't making it, it if it's not what you thought it was, you're encouraged to get up, go to another room. <laughs> you know, uh, that's how more democratic can you be about that? Uh, and Ed Camp Home is kind of a, a, an offshoot of that, where uh, they did the exact same thing, only they did it through Google Hangouts, and, and it was an amazing thing to watch, and, and I'd like to see another one happening soon. So as I'm nearing the end of this conversation, I'd, I'd like to say um, what, what I'd like to see open online experience happening in the future. And, and obviously, it's still going on until May of 2014. And, and please join us. Uh, we, the more people, really, the better it is. Um, but I don't, I don't want to see it just end after this year. I believe that this can be an excellent framework to, to continue on for years. And I can see uh, whether it's you know something that's a grassroots thing that that districts kind of join in and, and support in that way, or or maybe there's a central thing where somebody gets paid to line up speakers and, and organize and, and do all the network stuff like that, and you know maybe districts pay a fee to be joining, join into that quality learning or, or, or whatever happens, however it goes. Uh, I believe that it can be uh, something that is of value. For, for many, many, many more educators. Uh, because uh, this is Connected Educator Month in the U.S. And, and, uh, and this is the topic in our open online experience. And, and this is one of our um, collaborative projects. And, and this is just a Google Doc, uh, a Google presentation. And, and this is um, the rules. And... Uh, I opened this up to the open online people just a couple of days ago, and, and this is what they've put in already. Um, and, you know, they take on their own, um, their own uh, uh, slide and, and work on it, and, and some people have, have collaborated on, on slides. Uh, we were working on part of this. Uh, I had opened it up while we were in the middle of uh, an online session, so a lot of people were, were jumping in on, on slides together at the same time. Uh, uh, but it was it's just amazing to see, and, and I hope that by the time this is published in late October that uh, there'll be more slides, and, and that um, those of you watching this presentation now will come and look through the slides and, and maybe add a couple of your own on the end, or, or add some notes. Um, to the slides that already exist. And, and if you add a note to the slide if that already exists, put a couple of uh, um, uh, speaker notes at the bottom. Why did you add a bit on there? Well, what do you think makes it better? Uh, so there's a blank campus. Go ahead and get started.